Last summer, I had the idea to make a movie about my hometown. It would be about boredom and desperation and the ways in which punk subculture has filtered into mid-Missouri. I planned to focus on a single house, which I had once lived in, and my friends who currently live there. Hey, let's go to Moberly! <laughs> they didn't know about my plans yet, but I figured I'd surprise them. Okay, so this is Alton. Um, I'm guessing it's pretty early, like noon, or everyone's probably asleep. But uh, we'll go check it out. I'll show you guys what's going on in there. Huh, here's Mike. Hey, Mike. Uh, um, I'm just bringing these guys over to check out Alton. What yeah. are you up to? I'm making a, a work on a documentary called What Hicks Do for Kicks. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, it's about, you know, small town America, that kind of stuff. Yeah? That's cool. Is it all, you shooting it all like this? Uh, no, this is just sort of to establish a uh, point of view. Hey, have you seen, uh, have you seen any of the Alton kids around? No, Do they I haven't. sleep, or? I don't think they're, um, I don't, I haven't seen anybody for a while. Yeah? Are you kind of, uh, unwelcome at Alton these days, or? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. But go check it out, and if there's nobody around, you know, man, I'll come get some records stuff that I left here. Yeah, okay. Um, good luck with your documentary. Yeah, good luck with whatever you're doing. Okay, thanks Mike. See you later. So this is where I used to live. This is a film zine. It was supposed to be a collection of stories and pictures and portraits of Columbia, my hometown, and my friends who live here. Then they moved to Moberly. It wasn't my intention to make a movie about Moberly, but since I had a film crew ready, I figured I'd follow them up there and see what happened. Hi. Hello. Yes. Um, my name's David. Wilson, I, uh, I'm from Columbia. I'm looking for some friends of mine. Mm -hmm. um, five young guys, all from the ages of like 16 and 20. Uh, one's got bleached mm -hmm. blonde hair. Um, I think they, I think they moved up to Moberly. Five and guys I, with bleached blonde hair from. Well, Columbia. not all of them have bleached blonde hair. Okay. But um, yeah, I just saw the off chance that you've seen them, maybe. Is that them? No, I don't. I don't think so. Okay, they're not rednecks. No. Uh. They're all sort of skinny young boys. Skinny young boys. Well, there's a lot of people around here who can meet that description. Uh, David? Yeah, okay. David. Joe um, Barnes. Good to meet you, Joe. You might want to try down at the on cue. Uh, there's a guy down there, a little goatee, uh, by the name of David Gaines. He's more familiar with the band scene here. Uh, as for weird and strange looking young people, uh, oh, there, there's quite a few around here. Huh. Uh, but I wouldn't 
know which ones are your friends. Okay, now here's my question. Why would they want to come here? Maybe it looks like you're on your way out the door. I don't want to stop you. No, but, uh, I've already gone out the door. Oh, okay. I was going toward the automobile. Um, maybe we could come back sometime. And uh, yeah, it looks like you have a really interesting store here. Like, uh, Do you want to buy something? Maybe. Well, then you're welcome back. Sounds good. We'll, uh, okay. we'll stop back by. Okay. Joe? Okay. Good meeting you. Good meeting you. I think. We, uh, this Saturday night, mm -hmm. there is a huge party mm -hmm. on the outskirts of town with three bands playing. Really? It is right up there. It's one with Kenny with a hatchet in his head. Go over and look at the information. I'll be there. Okay. The whole town will be there. <laughs> Face it, man. You're in the underbelly of the Midwest right here. That is the reality of the situation. There's not much to do. So your best option is <laughs> to get to these events two or three times a year. Uh, get wasted and hopefully get laid and live for the moment. Yeah, like bands, music scene, just like kind of the uh, the unofficial history of Moberly or something. Oh, weird, okay. Because so. yeah, a lot of people don't understand what actually goes on in this sort of town. Yeah. Little bitty town in Moberly in Missouri. It's, you know, people think, well, it's a quiet town, country folks, and it's really not. My dad used to skate on homemade boards back in the 60s. Really? Yeah, that was fun. And they used to do crazy stuff. Is your dad from Moberly or? Mm-hmm. Born. Wow. Born in Moberly, so was I. Where do you get skate stuff in Moberly? Nowhere. We order it magazines and stuff. We usually go to Columbia. We're like asking where to skate. And he's like, well, why don't you go out of town? <laughs> We're like, but we live in town. We can't even get a skate shop here. We can't skate, we can't do anything. Some cops are alright because they don't care, they just sit there and they drive by. And then some other ones, they just don't have anything better doing, they start messing with you. We're trying to have fun, we're not doing anything bad with skateboarding, we're getting arrested for it. But you can go down the corner, find some house, do crack, and you know, you'll be fine. Okay. Have you seen okay. Ninja Scroll number, number like that, they'll cut in you in a little pieces. United States of America place for you. Crystal Met. Beverly's fascinating because everybody here does drugs, everybody here drinks, everybody here drinks. Bunch of belligerent drugs, but they basically are good-hearted people. Well, give us a hell yeah! You can put a puppet show on stage though, and if you had 15 kegs fucking parked right here, the kids would come. <laughs> Too many crack dealers on the streets, but as far as the music, the music rules. Give them something to vent a little bit. And that's, you know, that's about it. And I love giving, I love local music, so I'll give them a chance to play. Serpus, Tongue Hook, Daphne Greed, they all kick ass. So you all playing a band? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Daphne Greed. Where'd the name come from? Uh, Scooby-Doo, maybe. Yeah. What? Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Columbia. Um, I'm working on this movie, but I'm looking for this, these friends of mine who I think moved up here a little while ago. What was the original impetus? Like, how did you start playing together? Were you all friends? Or? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We planned it all out before we actually got instruments and everything, and then <laughs> bought instruments that summer. How did people react when you guys started playing or when you first played your first concerts with them? People were curious more than anything. Yeah, they still are. <laughs> still a lot of people that like haven't heard us that kind of... That's sometimes the only reason they come out is just to see a girl band. They don't really care, like, what we sound like, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> What role, if any, do you think like boredom plays? Like being a kid and living here and feeling like you're you're trapped or anything. Is that? I mean, do y'all think about that or? I think every kid thinks about that that lives here. I really do. Because 
that it just seems like everybody's like, it's got to be better someplace else. You know, yeah. There's got to be more to do. You talk to older people and they have gone so many places and they always find themselves back here. I mean, it's a nice town. It's not like, like real, real shitty or anything. You know, it's just, it's just like there's nothing to do. <laughs> there's never been anything to do. I don't think. I think it's like grown worse since we got older. So. Do you guys, you guys practice up here, right? Yeah. Do you have trouble with the cops or anything? <laughs> yeah, just one time, not really. What yeah. happened at that? Oh, a lot of yelling, and then John, who's my boyfriend, <laughs> just kind of tackled this one guy. I was just like standing back, watching, hoping he didn't get hurt, and then all the other boys rushed. Then cops were coming, so we all just sped out of there. <laughs> yeah. I said, let's have a party, not let's have fucking Friday night fights. Her boys are kind of rowdy. Beat the fuck well, out of him because he... There's one cop in particular that doesn't like them, so he, uh, yeah, he hassled them just the other day. They got arrested for skating. Uh -huh. Arrested, like, taken down to, like, the mm -hmm. police station? And... Andrew did, yeah. Really? Yeah. He got cuffed. He said <laughs> something not very nice about one of the city officials. <laughs> We've all had, like, that were good or that, you know, some girls are like, wow, you know, you're doing that, but not really, not really that they're appreciative of what I'm saying or anything. I, I don't know that they can even understand it. I have some songs about, like, eating too much, <laughs> but it's not, it doesn't sound like that, you know, it's not like, you know, I'm fat or, uh, it's, you know, it's not like that, it's like kind of a roundabout way. At this point, do you think, like, in five years or ten years, like, you'll be in a band, or will it be something that you like put off or <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I'd like to still do it. Do it till we're like forty. Have kids and <laughs> they can grow up and do it. <laughs> I guess you know, while I'm up here in Moberly, like I don't know, is there anyone else I could talk to you about kind of I guess it's kinda of like what it's like maybe to be the freaks of the outcasts. You could talk to Surface. Surface is awesome. Hey. Hey. Oh. I'm looking for some friends of mine, like four or five guys, uh, kind of freaky looking. Wow. I came from a Catholic school, uh -huh. Catholic school in Moberly. Lane gave me the biggest culture shock. Oh my God, he is so cool. I'm so happy to see him. You guys are your surface, right? Right. Okay, yeah, they said to come come talk to you guys. See, maybe maybe you've seen him or something. I don't think so. Okay. So you guys practicing? What the fuck do you think? <laughs> That affects you guys as bad. That sucks. Held us back. We're in a rut. Big, major rut. There's a small and loyal fan base, but it's pretty small. That you get a lot of people that are there and they're right there on the scene, but they didn't come to watch you play. Like, you know, cowboys, people like that, which there's a lot of them around here, and so they see everybody jumping around. Well that they, they they care less about the band or anything, but they're there. And so they think that's cool and they go and try to hurt people and shit like that. Just because it's, you know, the kid's got long hair and a couple of earrings, so let's jump on him a little bit just for fun. You know, they're not there to support anybody. I was a, a little kid, and everything on the radio was either Michael Jackson. The wham or something like that. So I just got lucky. I got a hold of the Twisted Sister tape. Twisted Sister started it off for me. When I, when I moved down here a couple of years ago, uh, it seemed like there was like two types of kids and there, was, there were like two things to do, which was drugs and sports. Yeah. And like that was it. When I was 14, 15, 16, that age, there wasn't any bands, there wasn't any shows. You know, I didn't know anybody that knew anybody that played in a band. afterwards because I think you're cool, <laughs> which we are. It's pretty bad around here. It's thick tension in the air all the time. 
Everybody always has to stare at you when you drive down the road because they're so interested in what the, you know, the other person's doing because there's nothing else. They have nothing else. It's pretty pathetic. Missouri, in a, as a whole, is just is not the place to be for us right now, and that's that. This shit box is gross. <laughs> This town is the first ring of hell. This is purgatory. It's like you're trapped, man. Morally, I mean, everybody cries to get out. And once you're out, man, you try to get back in this, you know, you know what I'm saying? Morbidly is all about uh, having sex with cows. I mean, it's used to the country life, I guess. It's a great place to grow up, but it's a lousy place to live. Kids from a small town, they grow up and they get this chip on their shoulder. You know, it is, it's a cool thing to say that your hometown sucks like a motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? That really, really sucks. So I'm basically here trapped in purgatory where there is no scene unless you create one, which I, you know, I'm not saying I created this, but I'm helping. I'll be like 55 and I'll like work at a factory and I'll be like some pissed motherfucker. I'll, I'll live in a trailer and shit and I'll have a fucking beer stomach and shit and I'll still hang out with most of these people right here. That whole uh, British explosion, the whole metal thing with priests and Sabbath and all that, that was a depressed area over in England and there was nothing but to work in factories and they, they vented by making this aggressive music. Same scenario here. You have an option to work in factories or you move the fuck away, you know? And if you stick around, you gotta get out of your system somehow. Following my friends to Moberly wasn't what I expected when I started this film, but things seemed to work out okay. Kids in Moberly are just as desperate to create a culture of their own as kids in Columbia, only they have even less to work with. I never found my friends, and eventually I ran out of film and money and had to give up and head back to Columbia. And maybe I wasn't in Moberly long enough to do more than just skim the surface, but hopefully I managed to notice a few details that might not be apparent to someone on the inside looking out. <laughs> 